Hi again, everybody, and welcome back. This example 9-7 is what we call a ballistic pendulum. And uh, ballistics refers to uh, moving projectiles. You may have heard that term uh, having watched, uh, I don't know, CSI or something like that. Um, where, you know, I guess in that show, they refer to real bullets. But uh, here we're going to have a just a round sphere that is functioning as a bullet, or we're going to call it the bullet. And... Um, that's going to be fired or, or shot at some speed uh, into this pendulum bob. This kind of squarish box at the bottom of this pendulum right here is called the bob. And you can just barely see that there is sort of a cavity, a dotted line cavity in there. So when the bullet um, strikes the bob, it's actually going to get um, embedded inside of it. It's going to stick inside of the bob, and they're going to move as one mass. So this is a great example of an inelastic collision, where two things collide and stick together. All right, so here, the bullet and the bob, um, as indicated by lowercase m and capital M, um, now have momentum together, right? Because uh, this had momentum, mass, and velocity. It was moving this, it was uh, striking this unmoving bob here. Now they're both moving together, and they both have kinetic energy, in which case they rise up to a certain point and gain potential energy due to gravity. All right, so they go up and they stop moving, and at that height right there, that's uh, what the, uh, the potential energy due to, due to gravity is that they have. Okay, so what we were asked, we're go what we're going to be asked to find is what is the, uh, the initial velocity of the bullet. Okay, now by the way, where we're doing this all in general terms, there's, there's no values given right here, um, but we're going to be describing the initial velocity of the bullet in terms of everything else in this problem right here. You've got your small mass, m, the bullet. You've got your big mass, the bob. Um, your g is gravity, of course. L is the length of, I should make this L right here. I'm going to do it as a lowercase l like that, okay? That's the length of our, of our pendulum. And uh, uh, let's see, <clears throat> oh, the angle theta, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, that is our angle theta, so it swings up kind of like that, all right? And so it swings up, and where it stops swinging up and is about to turn around and come back down, that's the height that it rises to, okay? Now, there's a couple um, suggestions here for us to find the speed after the collision using C of M. That means conservation of momentum. Um, and we'll use these as little, as little guidelines right here, but I'm actually going to do them backwards. I'm going to start at this end and then move back towards the front. So we're going to look at a conservation of momentum collision um, or problem before and after this collision here. So when the, bomb, the bullet hits the bob. Then we're going to look at uh, conservation of energy right here where we have now the bullet and bob system moving upwards against gravity. So what kind of energy does it have right here? We've got kinetic energy. What kind of energy does it have right here when it finally moves up and stops and is at some height? There, it's got potential energy due to gravity. All right, so all that moving kinetic energy turned into potential energy when it swung up to this height right here. So we want to be able to describe the initial velocity in terms of all this other stuff. Okay, so I'm going to um, I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to start by finding the height in terms of the length l, um, which is the length of this whole pendulum right here, and the angle theta. Now, what I'm going to need to do is definitely shrink this down a little bit. So, um, give me a second right here. And uh, I think you can probably still read that. It's really the, the diagrams that we're going to be using more than anything. Um, we'll see how that goes, okay? Um, I think I might have enough space down at the bottom. I'm going to shrink it a little bit more down at the bottom right there to do some work. All right? So, let's look at our height, um, our height h. In fact, you know, I'm going to do one more little adjustment here. I'm going to slide this over like that, okay? Our height h. Let's describe this in terms of l and of that angle theta right there, all right? So we don't want h to be in our final equation. We want it to be in terms of the length of the pendulum and the angle that it swings up to, all right? Well, you may recall problems like this from before. Let's switch to a different color right here. I'm going to go with blue where that, if we draw a line over there, here down to the bottom is our height h. And um, we've called this right here, we've called it a from there 
So they would call that A, A for adjacent. All right, so it's adjacent to that angle theta. Um, and of course, L is the hypotenuse. So what we've done by drawing a line straight across is really we've made a right triangle. Okay, this angle theta, that's the hypotenuse, and our adjacent side A. All right, so we can say that the height H, we'll start up here. The height H is going to be the whole length of the pendulum um, string minus A, right? So we, we found A, and then we subtracted that from the whole length, and we got H. So our height H is our length minus A. And um, we also went on to say, well, how do you find A? A is going to be the hypotenuse, L, times the cosine of the angle theta, right? You have to turn your head sideways a little bit, because we're used to dealing with uh, thetas that are based on the horizontal. But this is based on the vertical right here. This is adjacent to the, uh, the theta, and so that's going to be L cosine of theta. L cosine of that angle theta. So why don't we just take A and substitute it in right there, and we're going to have H described in terms of L and of theta. So our height H that the bob and the bullet combination rise up to is going to be L minus L cosine theta. Okay? All right, let's sort of just, just leave it off to the side for now. We're going to do this little part right here. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm not ready to move on quite just yet. Let's describe the energy that it has right here at that point. What kind of energy does it have? Well, we said before that it has potential energy due to gravity, right? So that's our... U G R I I said mu R U G our potential energy due to gravity, and that's of course we know is M G H. But we we, we redefined H in terms of uh, L and cosine of theta. So our potential energy due to gravity is going to be um, M G times. Oh, in fact, let me uh, let me be a little more careful right here. What is our mass that has risen up? Well, it's the mass of both of them, right? It's the mass of the bob and the bullet after they've collided. So we should be careful about what our M is. We really mean our M is big M plus little m times G times, did I leave space for it? Yeah, I think I did. L minus L cosine of theta, okay? That's our definition of the potential energy due to gravity. That's the mass that has risen up, that's gravity, of course, and that is our height h that we just described all the way up here. Okay? All right. Well, how does that help us move uh, towards our initial velocity of the bullet right here? Well, if we use conservation of energy, as it is suggested in step two right here, we've kind of done step three. We're working back to step two. What kind of energy does it have right after the, ball, the bullet and the bob have collided? It has kinetic energy, right? So the kinetic energy, let's do this in, I'll do this in red, okay? Um, the kinetic energy, we'll call that kinetic uh, final of the system, right? Because it's right after the, the collision of the bullet and the bob. What's that going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to the potential energy that it has when it rises all the way up. Because if energy is conserved, if we're working against gravity, gravity is conservative force, all right, so it's got all, all kinetic right here, and it moves up and it turns all from kinetic to all potential. Um, so we can say that amount of energy, kinetic here and potential there, is going to be the same thing. Okay? Well, let's go ahead and expand out our definition of kinetic energy. What would our definition of kinetic energy be right at this point? Well, we know the kinetic energy at any one point is one half. I'm going to have to move that up a little bit. I think I'm going to run out of space again. One half mv squared, right? What's the mass that's going on right here? Well, it's mass of the bob plus the mass of the bullet, right? So one half m, big M plus little m, times v squared. All right, well, what's the velocity that we're going to call it right here? We're going to call it the final velocity, because um, that's after the, uh, after the collision, all right? One half mv squared right there. That is going to be equal to what we described earlier, which is going to be that um, uh, our definition of, uh, of uh, potential energy. Big M, doesn't look like a very big M, does it? 
big M, capital M, plus lowercase m, times G times L minus L cosine of theta. Okay? Excellent. So, we've done conservation of energy from here to here because we're working against gravity and gravity is a conservative force. But we cannot use conservation of energy to find the initial velocity of this ball right here because energy, or this bullet, because energy was not conserved. This was an inelastic collision. So, in, in, in inelastic collisions, energy is not conserved. So, we have to go to a different conservation of something to figure out the initial velocity right here. And that's conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum is always conserved, um, or I should say momentum is always conserved. So we can use that to figure out what the initial velocity of the bullet was. So let me change over here and draw in black now. Down below, I'm going to be drawing, uh, I'm going to be writing uh, a conservation of momentum equation with the initial bullet, the initial bob, and then the final right here, bullet and bob. And we're going to tie one of those values into what we just talked about right here with the kinetic energy of the, of the, uh, the bullet and bob. All right. So we can say if we use conservation of momentum, we can say momentum. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Initial momentum of the bullet, conservation of momentum. Um, initial momentum of the bullet, and I really wish bullet and bob had different first letters, but that's okay, plus the initial momentum of the bob equals the final momentum, let me try that again, let me do a better P, the final momentum of the bullet and bob system, okay? And in that final momentum right there is going to be a velocity, which is that same final velocity that we found right here. We're going to turn this around to solve this for this velocity and stick it in um, right here where we have that velocity. But I'm getting ahead of ourselves. I'm getting ahead of us right here. Let's expand all these out, okay? What is the initial momentum of the bullet? Well, it is the mass of the bullet. In fact, you know what, I'm going to, instead of writing mass of the bullet, I'm just going to do lowercase m, right? Because that's what we said the mass of the bullet was. m times um, the initial velocity of the bullet. I kind of have to do bullet right there because that way we know what the initial velocity is. Plus the mass of the bob, a big capital M, let's make that a little bit bigger, times initial velocity of the bob, right? Wait a minute, what is that initial velocity of the bob just sitting here? Oh, it's zero. So that whole thing goes away. Equals what? Well, if momentum is conserved, if all this momentum is conserved, that means that has to equal the, the mass of the whole system times final velocity of the system. Okay? Hey, that final velocity right here is this final velocity right here. Ooh, I forgot to write in system in red. I'll do that. System right there. All right. Well, let us uh, take this equation now and solve it for the final velocity of the system and then put that in here and then we'll solve ultimately for the initial velo velocity of this bullet. It'll make sense when we get there. But let's just go one step further with this equation and solve for the final velocity of the system. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide down this m plus m. So it'll come down here. Well, in fact, let me just write it. I'll write it in red so you can tell it apart from... In fact, no. I'll write it in purple because we're combining the, the red and the blue. Final velocity of the system equals... All right, well, first of all, all this stuff right here is going to be in the numerator, so I'm going to write that on top. So that's m plus lowercase m times g times l minus l cosine of theta. Um, so what's going to get divided down from over here? Well, this m plus m, hmm, that's going to cancel out, right? m plus m, we can see how these guys are going to 
cancel out and go away. Um, but this 2, this one ha in, in the 1 half right here, is going to come up and be put in the numerator up over there. All right. The last thing we need to do, and this is a v final squared, so in order to undo that square, we need to square root uh, everything on the other side. So it's going to be that right there. So to clean that up a little bit, final velocity of the system after this collision right here is going to be square root of 2g times l minus l cosine of theta. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Well, that we can put right in here and then do a little tiny bit of algebra to solve just for this initial velocity of the bullet. So let me shrink this down just a little bit more. And our original problem is getting pretty small, isn't it? Um, and I'll write it uh, all in, in black now. All right, so the initial velocity of the bullet, or the mass of the bullet, times, move this down a little, right there. Mass of the bullet times initial velocity of the bullet, which is what we're solving for, plus, hey, nothing, right? Because that becomes zero, equals mass of both times the final velocity of the system. So we're going to put this in there for our final velocity, okay? Times square root of 2g times l minus l cosine of theta, okay? Oops, I need to finish out the uh, parenthesis right there. Okay, well, the last thing we need to do to solve just for the initial velocity of the bullet is to divide down our m. So that's what we're going to do. Um, last little, there we go. All right, so our final expression for the initial velocity of the bullet in terms of all this other stuff is means we're going to just take this m and divide it down. So the initial velocity of the bullet, bullet is going to be m plus little m times square root of 2g l minus l cosine theta all over little m. And that is our final answer. So if all goes well, we may even try to do this in class. And um, you're going to be solving uh, for the initial velocity of the bullet. As long as you know the mass of the two objects, the length of that the pendulum bob right there, and if you know the angle that it moves up to, you should be able to put those values into this equation and solve for the initial velocity of the bullet. But that is the, um, the intent of this uh, exercise right here, and we've done it, so we're finished. So if you have any questions, please make sure you come see me, and I'll see you on the next one.